Hello. This video animation provides a brief overview of installation guidelines published by the Masonry Veneer Manufacturers Association. To further enhance the cladding, waterway rain screen mats have been incorporated to create space for water drainage and ventilation. This assembly answers an increasing demand for envelope integrity, reducing potential problems associated with water penetration. Let's begin. We'll start with your typical framed wall. We want to install a sill screed followed by your weather resistive barrier. Your sill screed has a solid three and a half inch metal leg that creates a transition from the framed wall to your foundation. Your weather resistive barrier should be two layers of material. Each of those should be equal to a 60 minute gray D tar paper. You can also use house wrap or a combination of both. We'd encourage you to consult with your manufacturer for specific recommendations. You should also install your weather resistant barrier in a shingled fashion, ensuring a free flow of water from the top of the walls to the bottom. You generally want to offset the seams and joints in your second layer of weather resistant barrier from those of your first. Additional protection against water penetration can be incorporated by installing flexible flashings on your inside and outside corners. And once your weather resistant barrier is installed, we're ready for the waterway rain screen drainage mat. We basically just roll it out over the surface of the wall and hammer staple it into place. You'll notice the rain screen mat is tight with the window casing. At the top of your wall, we want to put a spacer board up there. That's going to create a ventilation detail for the wall, and we'll talk more about that later in the video. Above your windows, we install a casing bead with weep, and at the jams in the sill, a casing bead without weep. You'll notice the casing bead is held back from the window approximately a half of an inch for a sealant joint. All the terminations in our stone veneer should incorporate a casing bead so we can install a sealant joint between the stone and the adjacent materials. Now we're ready for our metal lath or woven wire, typically a 2.5 pound metal lath or a 17 gauge inch and a half wire. You'll notice that the lath extends around the corner to the next stud and it's not broken on the inside or outside corners. Now we apply a scratch coat, typically at about a half of an inch thickness and we want to force our scratch coat down into that metal lath. Basically the entire weight of this assembly will be carried by the lath's attachment to the building. Once your scratch coat starts to firm up, we want to put a horizontal rake into our scratch coat. This horizontal rake provides a key to ensure a good bond between our stone veneer and the scratch coat. While your scratch coat is curing, you can install your sealant joints. We want to place back a rod down into that opening, followed by your sealant, typically a urethane or a silicone. And you want to tool the wet sealant to make sure we have positive contact on each side of the joint and also create the proper geometry. Now that our scratch coat's cured, we're ready to install our stone veneer. With so many profiles, you should once again consult with your manufacturer.
but for the purposes of this video, we're applying a half inch thick mortar bed on the entire back side of the stone. The stone should be placed on the scratch coat about a half of an inch from its final position. We want to force it down into that key, maybe rock it back and forth a little bit, and then slide it to its final spot. Incidentally, once you install your stone, you want to make sure that it's undisturbed until it makes positive contact and the mortar bed starts to firm up and create that bond. You'll see here that we're actually alternating our long from our short legs on our corner pieces to create a nice look. And also, because we have a sealant joint around the window now, it'll be helpful to take pieces of stone with a fairly straight edge so that you can place those directly adjacent to our sealant joint. The sealant joint needs to be visible and it needs to be serviceable. We're no longer going to grout from the stone to the window. You know, at some point, over the service life of this building, we're going to have water penetration. Whether it's a result of some cracks, maybe we have a sealant failure and water gets in there, or possibly the building is in a location of the country that's going to have more rain going into the wall than can evaporate out at certain times of the year. But because we have the rain screen map behind, we've created a separation from our scratch coat to our weather resistive barrier. So even if we get water into the scratch coat, the weather resistive barrier stays dry. If we actually have liquid water, we have a space for the water to drain out. This is very helpful at minimizing the likelihood of problems. If the profile selected requires grouting, you'll want to consult with the manufacturer. There are some options to grouting and they'll have the insight to make sure that it's done correctly. In general, there are some benefits to grout because it strengthens the wall. It also provides additional protection against water penetration. You'll notice at the top of the wall, we've created a gap between the top of our stone and the trim board we've placed earlier. That's because behind the wall, with the waterway rain screen mat, we have created a space. In the space, there's dead air. In the morning, the air is cool. As the sun comes up on the wall, it'll warm that air behind the stone veneer. The warm air is gonna to wanna to rise. The warmer the air, the more moisture vapor it can take with it. So what happens is the warm air rises and comes out through that space and cool dry air is introduced at the bottom. This actually creates ventilation behind the wall to help dry everything out and once again reduce the likelihood of problems with water penetration. Once your grouting is done, we've put a painted trim board at the top and we've completed the stone veneer. For demonstration purposes, let's take out the sealant joint and also the backer rod, and let's take a look from the side to see how the rain screen mat can help get the water out of the walls. You see we've got our ventilation detail here. The rain comes down inevitably to the face of the glass, and whether that's surface tension or maybe wind pressure, the water goes in behind the stone veneer. With the space that we've created, you can see that it simply falls down to the bottom of the wall and exits out across the sill screen. It's a very effective concept. For additional information, specifications, or details, give us a call anytime. 1-800-305-1045 
or check us out on the web at stuccoflex.com. Thank you very much.